The Graven Once upon a Thursday evening, with spirits spent and eyeballs bleary, post the bedtime stories reading of wimpy kids and hobbit lore, I plopped down on the divan with universal remote in hand, turned on the TV, not the OLED version I'd been begging for, to a program weird and wanton, not the one I had hoped for, something vacuous and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember how glottal fry and nasal timbre instantaneously dismembered once bright neurons by the score. Yet I could not turn away to conversation or printed page. I was drowning in shallow seas of drama I had not once asked for. What is this trash? I muttered as I notched the sound of more, to better hear the blinged out boar. Of some outfit she was whining, it made her teaso look too shiny. As her selfie flash was lighting Botox lips and hem peeled pores, she couldn't get the background right, her puckered duck face off a slight. She fired the assistant to her third assistant, whom she'd hired days before. This is like a farce or something, so get your booty like out the door. But we're still BFFs, right? Forevermore? A commercial break thusly appeared. You thought this t vote au contraire. For this instant was I born prepared to break the spell at its dark core. I seized upon my eye device to check twould be a stormy night. Then I launched my Instagram to see friends quinoa from the eve before. But in my feed most unsuspecting lurched that blinged out demon spore. Wearing a smile and not much more. Away with thee, I duly screamed, prayed for salvation in my Twitter stream, to banish the ghastly airbrushed meme back to from whence it had leapt forth. But there betwixt political memes a most vile promoted tweet, pushing bronzer on the masses whose pastiness upsets the boar. Get the hashtag glow you've craved if you can't vacay at the shore. I flush my cash, haunt me no more. Perhaps if I went analog, I could evade this plague's onslaught. Alas, my effort was for naught at the big box discount store. For on the cover of In Touch, the boar protested much too much, how celebrity disturbed her chi till even Shavasana became a chore. I sensed impending regurgitation at the vapid self-report, paid for my Kit Kat, then out the door. Amidst the traffic's give and take, I pondered humanity's mistake, and lifting up this gleaming fake to a seat of honor in the world's grand court. Wherefore didst we e'er decide to reward coquettish glance and sigh? What harbinger of doom is this that we stuff our souls with such ordure and shower adoration on a yoga pandit impostor? Pled the graven, watch me more. Back at home with children dreaming, the better half fitfully sleeping, I chanced again my timeline streaming, daring fate to find true north. But with each scrolling of the page, ten more examples of this fetid age, the rich, the famous, the loud, the shameless, clamoring for one like more. Idols carved from pride's own oar, quoth the graven, love us more. Now upon this midnight dreary, I sit racked with doleful queries, much aggrieved with modern theories for the existence of such ardor. These mannequins of celebrity trade for tarnish an eternal gleam, thought the prescription handed down to those who had by grace some worth. Thou shalt not, thus saith the Lord, be gone, foul graven, forevermore.